Here's the HTML file that includes video in an iBooks uh, ebook. Um, at the beginning, the, the, uh, the header is just a regular HTML tag with the namespace declaration for XHTML. Um, this isn't quite legal, but you just have to go with it. Um, you know, your regular head information, your body, whatever. The important bit for the video is down here. You're going to use a video element, which is new to HTML5. Um, the source is going to be, you know, the location of your video file in the uh, folder in your EPUB document. Um, now, it should be in M4V format or in 3GP format. QuickTime will do this, um, this conversion for you. Um, next, you're going to say controls equals true so that you can see, so that your reader can see the play button, the rewind, the volume control. Uh, the third aspect of the video element is the width and the height. The default measurements look to be for a widescreen movie. And if you've got, you know, a regular 640 by 480 movie, you're going to have black space on the black bars on the, on the left and the right. So if you put the width for 320 and the height as 240, You'll get, uh, you'll get rid of those black bars. Finally, I've noticed that when the, the, the default value for autoplay is actually false. So if you open up an iBook with a video in it, the movie won't play automatically. However, the weird thing is when you go back to the book after uploading anything else, if you go back to your iPad, the video shows automatically. And you don't want it to do that. So you're going to put autoplay equals false at the end of your your video element. Um, I haven't tested this next line because it's been working for me, which is kind of amazing. Um, but theoretically, what you put here will appear if the video does not. And finally, you're going to put your ending video element. And that's all there is to it. You, um, you know, compress your EPUB file as normal, and it actually works. It's kind of exciting.